Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about functions. We'll look at some simple cases of functions, and we'll look at passing arguments to functions. We'll look at the argument object that allows us to uh, pass in an infinite number of arguments into a function. And then we'll look at some advanced cases, uh, looking at function literals, so assigning an entire function to a variable and then using that variable all over the place to uh, to call into that function. And then we'll also talk about anonymous functions, functions that have no name. So a function is simply a block of code that's executed as a complete unit of work. It's typically used uh, to organize code that you'll want to reuse over and over within your application. It's also good for organizing uh, a given piece of functionality or chunk of functionality into a single spot, give it a name, and then be able to use it from anywhere within your application. Now that's the most simple definition I can provide. As you get into the more complex cases, uh, that doesn't always ring true. There's other reasons to create functions, but we'll leave that for another time. Now, there's also one other note uh, that we're not going to talk about in this video with regards to functions, and that is variables that are defined within functions using the var keyword. Uh, we've already alluded to the var keyword a little bit earlier about function scope and global scope. Still don't want to get into that topic just yet. We'll get to that soon. I'll reserve a whole video for that topic a little bit later. All right. So let's start off with our usual, our usual work here. Let's open up Notepad and then get our template in there and then we'll want to save as c9js07.html and uh, let's change this to and we'll copy that and put it in our h1. Now we're all set. Let's get our script tags in place. Great. And then also we don't want to forget our type equals text slash JavaScript. Great. All right. Again, I'm going to leave the indentation all the way to the left for my own convenience, uh, pointing out that that is not the way you typically want to write your code. You want to use indentations. Okay. But at any rate, let's go ahead and start and create a very simple function. We'll use the keyword function and we'll give it a simple name, my new function. Typically you want to give your functions meaningful names. This is not a very meaningful name, but hopefully it'll suffice for the moment. And now inside of our function, inside of the opening and closing curly braces that define this block of code, we're going to give this block of code a name, or, or rather we've already given it a name, my new function. Now we're going to give it some functionality and we're just going to keep it easy. Now, to invoke my new function, all I need to do is call it by its name. Using the opening and closing parentheses, these are the function invocation operator like we talked about earlier. We'll talk about their purpose here in just a moment when declaring or defining the function. Let's go ahead and save and make sure that we have JavaScript working at this point. Awesome, we do. All right, so we could call our function from here, or if we were to, for example, input type equals uh, button or submit rather, on click equals my new function, and let's put a value equals click me. All right, so you saw from that example that I was able to execute this function when our document loaded, and then also whenever I clicked the click me button. So it's reusable code. It can be used multiple times. Great. So that's the first version, our simple version of our function. All right, let us define a new function We'll give it the same name. But this time I'm going to add an argument to the function. And an argument is a parameter that's passed into the function for use inside of the function. So this is how I'm going to use it. 
in this case. Now I can use it in many different uh, in many different ways depending on the the value I expect to be passed in uh, and what I hope to do with it once I get a hold of it. It's used much like like a variable. So whatever value is, and I can name it anything I want. Let's name it my value just to prove that. Let's change that to my value. All right. Now, whenever I go to call my new function, I need to pass it a value. In this case, I'm passing it a string value of partner. sure to spell it correctly. There we go. Howdy partner. Great. All right, so we're able to define an argument and then use the argument's value inside of the body of our function. Great. All right, let's take a little departure here and let's create a simple function call add. We have two arguments and I can define as many arguments as I want to when I declare or define my function. In this case, I'm going to return the result of first number plus second number. This return value means once it's called, it's going to return back some value, or we could just remove that altogether, and it will prematurely come to the end of execution. So there might be some lines of code like we saw when we were looking at the if statement earlier. We might have additional code here, or we can circumvent it by calling the return early. In this case, I'm going to return a value from a function, and so I'll do this now var my result equals add one and two and then we'll go alert my result and we get the result of three great so again we can pass in more than one parameter and then we can return a value at the end of the execution of the function. We can capture the value that's been returned and save it into a variable. And in this case, I'm merely displaying that variable in an alert box. Great, let's continue on. Now I can define a different version of my add method or add function that will allow me to pass any number of arguments into it and it will add them all. So here I'm gonna create a temporary value. I'm gonna assign it the value of zero. Automatically, whenever you create a function, it has a built-in object that we can reference called the, uh, the arguments object and it will have every value passed in to through the arguments for the given function. So you can go ahead and pass as many arguments as you want to in a function and uh, we can then, uh, even if you don't define them in the function themselves. Now I'm gonna use some odd looking syntax. We're gonna come back to the syntax later when we talk about looping. Don't wanna talk about what it does just at the moment. Just know that we're gonna loop around and look at every argument that is passed into our add method. And again, we'll talk about this for loop a little bit later. Also, I'm gonna use this strange open square bracket, close square bracket syntax. And we'll talk about what that does again a little bit later. It's an array We'll talk about arrays in its own video. But for now, let's just look at 
the fact that there's an argument object that lets us add as many different arguments as we want to. So we can do add one and two and three and four and five together, okay? And we could keep going if we wanted to. Uh, but let's see what that gets us. And clearly I've done something wrong here. Let's take a look at it. Ah, it's arguments. There we go. And adding up all those numbers, it comes out to 15. Great. All right, so let's comment all that out and continue on here. All right, so functions have a built-in arguments object, which allows us to get out each of the arguments that we pass in, even if we don't define them up front. Moving on. Here's a fun little exercise. All right, so this is a slightly different take on uh, creating the function. Now we've given a function a name in the past, but that's not what's going on here. Here we're defining a function, but then immediately assigning it to a variable. This variable is of type object. It's a special type of object, a function object. From that point on, we can then use that function object in the rest of our application and call into it just like we would if we had given the function and name on its own. In fact, we could even do, here, let's just run it like this and I'm gonna do one more variation on it to show you how it works. All right, so three, add one plus two equals three, right? All right, so now let's do this. Let's give this function a name of Bob. And now let's comment this out var my new value equals bob one and two or two there we go let's see if this works all right this doesn't work at all and the reason is because we have defined a function literal at the moment when we assigned our function to the variable add me so it just ignores the other name that we give it. We can just delete it. It doesn't matter anymore. Again, the importance here is this is called a function literal. And you might think, why in the world would I even need to know that? The truth of the matter is that this is used all the time in JavaScript. Code examples you'll see online will use this often. It's very handy because you can assign a function to a variable and then pass that as, say, for example, an argument into another a function or into uh, uh, in, for use in another context. So as our examples get more complex, we'll see where this kind of benefits us. All right. So let's just continue on for now and know that that is how we create a function literal. And let's talk about one last type of function called an anonymous function. All right. So let's start off. And at this point, our function looks exactly like what we did here. We just haven't assigned it to a variable yet. And so at this point, this function is called an anonymous function. You're going to see uh, in uh, when we work with jQuery that anonymous functions are used all the time. Now, in a very simple case, a little bit difficult to demonstrate how useful it could possibly be. Trust me, used all the time. We'll get to that. Stay with us until we get into like um, a video 15, 16 there, and you'll see this pop up all over the place. But just to show you how this might work, let's go ahead and wrap this in a pair of parentheses. 
and then I can call this anonymous function like so. Now, by itself, it won't really do anything. I guess I could just do uh, var my result equals. So notice I'm defined my anonymous function, and then I'm going to execute that anonymous function by passing in two arguments here. Again, this is pretty funky stuff, right? And then we can do um, alert my result. But this is an important concept because we're going to see this pop up again and again in JavaScript. All right, so that worked. Now we can just get rid of, in fact, let's just copy some of this stuff out right here. I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to get rid of that example. And instead of creating a variable to store the, the value, let's just call alert with another set of parentheses around all of this and then save it. And let's just change this from one to three just to show you that there's nothing up my sleeve here. And then execute this. And we should see the value of four execute in the alert box. All right, so look how compact we made that uh, through the use of an anonymous function, executing it immediately, all in the context of an alert. Uh, a call to the alert function. All right? All right, so uh, there is a point to this final example. Uh, functions don't need names. They can be defined and passed around anonymously. And again, we'll see examples of this soon. All right, so several different variations on the notion of creating functions in JavaScript. Hopefully, nothing here blew you away. Uh, you'll use each of these different types at various points. And as I said earlier, functions are really central to how JavaScript operates, whereas uh, classes and objects are more central to other languages like C Sharp and Visual Basic and so on. All right, you're doing great. Continue push forward. We're getting closer to some really meaty stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.